you may or may not remember back in seventh grade, we just mentioned real quickly cell division. Uh, and we talked about the two types. And this section, we're just going to talk about one type of cell division called mitosis. We'll talk about the other type of cell division, meiosis, when we get to sort of genetic and reproductive. Um, because meiosis is a specialized form of cell reproduction that only happens to produce gametes. So we're talking about mitosis, okay? a, a type of cell division. So as we said in our question of the day, cells, we all started from a single cell, a zygote. And somehow we grew into a whole organism made of trillions of cells. And our cells are constantly breaking down. They only have a lifespan of a certain amount of time. They no longer function. The cellular components break down. And so as those cells sort of die off, they're replaced by new cells. Those new cells come about by this process of mitosis to grow in size, to produce new cells. Those cells are created through mitosis. Any type, type of growth or repair, the cells come about through this process. In organisms that reproduce asexually, such as bacteria or um, an amoeba, they reproduce through <coughs> mitosis. These single-celled organisms basically make a copy of themselves and split them in two, and that's how they reproduce. And so the processes we're going to learn today goes through a series of stages, different things that need to happen in order for a cell to uh, make a copy of itself. And it's all very tightly controlled by different um, chemical messengers that regulate when cells grow and divide and when they don't. One important type are called cyclins. These are proteins. These are proteins that regulate what we call the cell cycle, which we'll learn about in a minute, of when cells sort of grow, when they copy their DNA, when they split. That's all regulated by these chemicals. And sometimes the signals about when to divide come from inside of the cell. Or other times they come from the outside of the cell. Um, there's an interesting experiment that uh, a scientist did where they grew some cells on a petri dish. And the cells grew, multiplied through mitosis to fill up the entire dish. And then they stopped growing. They stopped dividing. When the cells came into contact with each other, there was some sort of inhibition, some signal saying, OK, let's stop dividing. Then when the scientists scraped away a, a group of cells from the middle, this yellow area, that signaled to the cells they're no longer in contact with each other, and they started to grow and divide again through mitosis. And they grew and divided until they filled up the petri dish, and then they stopped. Okay. So there's this signaling that comes from either inside or outside. Different hormones can sort of signal to cells to start to grow. Um, and this is called contact inhibition, that cells will fill up the space if necessary um, and then turn off. And that's important because when cells grow, uh, when the inhibition is sort of taken away and cells grow rapidly and grow when they shouldn't, that's what we call cancer. So cancer is a disease in which the cell cycle has sort of been short-circuited, cells grow uncontrollably, they don't have this inhibition, and they form tumors which interfere with the functioning of uh, other body systems, less So that's what cancer is. Cancer is a disease when the cell cycle has been disrupted, and cells grow in masses that we call tumors. And so normally there, there's different types of genes that scientists have found related um, to cancer. Certain genes that when they become activated cause cells to grow in this way. 
And so um, some modern forms of research in, in um, curing cancer have to do with uh, working with the genes that can lead to this out of control cell growth. So the normal cell cycle is broken up into parts. And when we talk about mitosis, we're talking about this green section here. It's called the M phase. That's when a cell is actively dividing its, its DNA and dividing the contents of the cell. And after that happens, then it continues into this phase, broken up into G1, S, and G2. This is, whole thing is also called interphase. And different things happen in these different phases that we'll talk about. Right? The cell grows in size. The DNA copies itself. Okay? Stores up energy so that the cell can then divide. So we're talking about the specific type of cell division called mitosis. And mitosis is a type of cell division that maintains chromosome number. You guys remember how many chromosomes are found in a human, normal human cell? 23 pairs. 46. So 46 altogether. Uh, that's a human's, what we call the diploid number. The normal number of chromosomes in a body cell is called the diploid number. It's abbreviated 2N. Okay. And each species has a typical diploid number. Like we said, humans is 46. The only cells in a sexually reproducing organism that have a different number of chromosomes are typically the gametes, okay, the reproductive cells. In animals, it would be a sperm and egg cell. They, keep, they have half the number of chromosomes. So in humans, that's 23 chromosomes are found in sperm and egg cells. That's called a haploid number. We abbreviate it N. And so when we talk about chromosomes, what chromosomes are is a sort of a little package of DNA and a protein sort of wrapped up together. Our chromosomes, that's where our genetic information is. We inherit our chromosomes from our parents. 23 from the mother, 23 from the father. And they come in pairs. And when, it depends when, when you look at the DNA, the chromosomes and DNA may look different. Sometimes the chromosomes are sort of um, unwound, and you can't really see them when you look at the cell. Other times there are these single strands. When they replicate, they look like X's. Okay? And so it depends when you look. Here's an actual electron microscope image. These are chromosomes that have been replicated why they look like X's. And each side of the X are called sister chromatids. They're identical to each other. This chromatid copied itself into these two copies here, and that's why it's an X. They're held together. This little green dot is called the central here. And they have a partner chromosome that is similar, but not necessarily identical called homologous chromosomes. So the different <coughs> number, as we said, in humans is 46, but it varies in, in different species. The number doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't have to do with complexity or uh, size or intelligence or evolutionary history. It's just sort of a, a number you know, humans have 46 chromosomes. That's our diploid number. Monkey, rhesus monkey, 28. A horse, 66. Rabbits, 44, and so forth. So we're going to talk about the steps of mitosis. Okay. And so the phase in which the cell is not actively dividing, we call interphase, sort of like in between. In interphase, it, it's thought of sort of as a resting stage between cell divisions. And during interphase, that's all of this blue section, lots of different things happen. But one of the things that happens when the cell is going to divide 
is the chromosomes replicate, they copy themselves, getting ready for division. When the cell is in this phase, the new inside of the nucleus, you don't see individual chromosomes. Obviously, they're in there. The DNA is still in there, but it's kind of unwound into this sort of ball of thread that we call chromatin. So you don't see individual chromosomes. But during this time, during this S phase of interphase, that's when the DNA copies itself. There are also these things, they look like rigatoni, I think, and they copy themselves in this phase because they are important into organizing how the chromosomes are going to eventually split. So when the cell is going to divide, the chromosomes have already been copied during that S phase. The phase we call prophase, I think of as preparing. It's preparing for division to happen. And so a couple things happen. The nucleus, or the nuclear membrane, we should say, kind of disappears. It sort of breaks down. The nucleolus inside disappears. The chromatids start to become visible. We start to see them inside of the nucleus in the form of these X's. The centrioles start moving to different poles of the cell, to different sides of the cell. And stretching between them starts to form this thing we call the spindle, these fibers that help separate the chromosomes. So here's what it actually looks like in a cell that the chromosomes must stay. We can see the um, chromosomes are visible. They're kind of in a mess here. They're not distinct from each other, really, but they're condensed into chromatids. And the nuclear membrane is gone. So that's prophase, preparing. In metaphase, the chromosomes go to the middle of the cell part of the cell we call the equator. Remember the M in metaphase? Because they line up in the middle. And so the chromosomes line up. The spindle fibers that we're forming attach to these chromatids. Now this is obviously a simplified cell uh, in comparison to humans. If these are humans, there would be 46 chromosomes in this line. So it would be much larger. Here we see an actual microscope image. You can see nodes in metaphase because all the dark chromosomes are right down the middle of the cell. These areas here, this is the spindle part. After metaphase, each X splits. And the sister chromatids start separating and moving to opposite poles of the cell. So those centrioles that were holding the two halves of the X together split. And now the two halves of the X are separate from each other. And they're getting pulled apart to opposite sides of the cell. Here you see it happening an actual plant cell. That's anaphase. Eventually, those chromosomes make their way all the way to each end of the cell. And the nuclear membrane forms around those chromosomes separately. So here, what you see in this end of telophase is you have a single cell that hasn't split completely. But in that cell, you have two nuclei. If you count up the number of chromosomes in this example, there's four chromosomes in this cell, four chromosomes in this cell. They are identical to each other because, again, the DNA copies itself. 
in mitosis, the two copies are just being separated into two different nuclei. Then the last step is what we call cytokinesis, the splitting of the actual cell itself. So in animal cells, the middle starts to pinch in until it completely separates. And when it's done so, we'll end up with two cells that have exactly the same genetic material. They have the same chromosome, they have the same number of chromosomes, the DNA is exact. And so this last stage, cytokinesis, the splitting of the actual cell, in animal cells, like I said, the cell membrane just pinches in in the middle and eventually separates into two cells. In plant cells, it works differently. Because plant cells have the um, plant the cell wall, it, it's not flexible. It's rigid. So it can't just pinch in two like an animal cell. Instead, in plant cells, after mitosis has happened, after telophase, a new cell wall starts to sort of just grow between the two uh, nuclei, eventually filling in, and now here we have two separate cells. But we started with one. So the way the cell actually divides is a little different. This is called the cell plate, which grows and just splits the cell. Into. During the mitotic phase, the cell will undergo mitosis to form two new nuclei, and then divide to form two new individual cells during cytokinesis. Mitosis is the process of dividing the duplicated DNA of a cell into two new nuclei. Mitosis is split into distinct stages. The first stage is prophase. The DNA condenses, organizes, and the classic chromosome structure appears. Next comes prometaphase, 
where microtubules attach to the chromosomes. This step is followed by metaphase, where the chromosomes align. Metaphase is followed by anaphase, where the chromosomes separate. Finally, during telophase, nuclear membranes reappear around the two sets of chromosomes. Mitosis is now complete. After mitosis, two new cells are formed by a process called cytokinesis. Mitosis is only one part of what is called the cell cycle. For many eukaryotic cells, a cell is duplicated every 24 hours. Most of the life of the cell is spent in interphase. Interphase consists of three stages called G1, S, and G2. G1, or GAP1, is the first growth stage of interphase. In G1, the cell grows to nearly its full size and performs many of its specific biochemical functions that aid the organism. Next is the S, or synthesis phase. This is an important stage because it is during the S phase that DNA in the nucleus is replicated. The cell next enters another growth stage called G2, or GAP2. It is during G2 that the cell finishes growing. Once the cell has duplicated DNA in the nucleus and two centrosomes have appeared in the cytoplasm, mitosis can begin. For a typical eukaryotic cell, this will last about 80 minutes. During the first stage of mitosis, called prophase, we first see the classic chromosome structure. This occurs through a condensation process. At the same time, protein strands, called microtubules, appear from the centrosomes in animals. Finally, a structure found within the nucleus, the nucleolus, disappears. Next, prometaphase begins when the nuclear membrane is broken down. At the same time, microtubule strands, or spindle fibers, are growing from the centrosomes. These strands attach to a protein structure called the kinetochore. One kinetochore is attached to the centromere of each sister chromatid. Next comes metaphase. During this stage, the sister chromatids align along the center of the cell so that both chromatids face toward opposite poles of the cell. Now the sister chromatids are ready to be separated. This occurs during anaphase through a shortening of the microtubules attached to the kinetochores. Additionally, the poles of the cell move farther apart, causing increased separation of sister chromatids. At the end of anaphase, the sister chromatids have moved to the two ends of the cell. Telophase is the final stage of mitosis. It is here the components of the new cells begin to appear. At this point, the spindle fibers are broken up. A new nuclear membrane surrounds the chromosomes at the end of each cell, and the chromosomes uncoil and return to an uncondensed state. Mitosis is now complete. The formation of two cells is all that remains. Following mitosis, the cell undergoes a process called cytokinesis. First, the cell is compressed by a contractile ring that divides the cell in nearly equal halves. By now, the organelles in the cell have been replicated and are now divided between the two halves of the cell. This includes mitochondria, Golgi bodies, and the rough ER. Plant cells also have chloroplasts. Once split, the two new cells are now fully in the G1 stage of interphase and ready again to begin their growth. Let's watch the process one more time. Mitosis begins with prophase. Notice the DNA condensing into chromosomes during this stage. Microtubules appear during prometaphase, and the nuclear membrane breaks down. Metaphase occurs when the chromosomes are aligned at the center of the cell. During anaphase, the chromosomes are moving apart. The telophase stage is marked by the appearance of new nuclear membranes. This is the end of mitosis. Finally, the splitting of the cell occurs during cytokinesis. The 
two new cells are now ready to grow and perform their specialized functions. So there you see just an overview of the steps. So it's important to know that it's not, it's in mitosis, is a continuous process. It just happens. We split it into these different phases um, just to talk about it and be able to identify different sort of um, landmarks that happen within the process, but it's a continuous process. It doesn't go through prophase, then stop, and then go to metaphase, anaphase, and it's just a, that continual process. Also, it's important to note there are these checkpoints along the way. The cell, it's important that the DNA is correctly copied and split, and so there's different checkpoints in each of those phases, which be sure every, which make sure everything is sort of done correctly so that the next step can happen. If the cell sort of finds out that something's wrong, typically what happens is it doesn't continue through cell division because that could lead to uh, problems within the cell. Okay. 